All right, Dave, the floor is yours. Uh, what do you think is really going on here? Well, Kelly, I think, you know, we are in an economy that in real terms is going nowhere. We've been treading water all year. We have no real growth. Uh, lots of people like to call that a recession. Some people don't. Uh, we've added a lot of jobs uh, and we haven't got a lot for it, which means productivity's taken it on the chin after an incredible run in productivity. Um, but uh, in general, I think that the, the storyline is one of a, of a world where the Fed has some comfort in this particular structure of the labor market so that it can continue to fight inflation going into the end of the year. And I think they're going to do just that. I think they wanted to engineer a slowdown. They have engineered a slowdown. They've been successful at it. They're going to keep doing it. And we're going to see inflation slowly come down. Maybe not as fast as some people had hoped for, but it's going to, it's going to slowly come down. So let's talk about the biggest risk you see here, which is one we maybe could get some clues about in the minutes uh, next hour. You think the biggest risk is that they accelerate the balance sheet unwind towards the end of this year or in early next year. Explain that. So, Kelly, I mean, we're, we're sitting here with a 10-year note yield at 2.9, just under 2.9%. We, we haven't really been able to take that 10-year note yield up very high. Um, and that's really what drives a lot of the, uh, the tightening of policy. It's not what you're doing with short rates as much as what's happening with the long end of the yield curve. So I think the Fed is going to get increasingly frustrated as it takes rates up to 35 to 4%, which I think it wants to do by the end of the year, when the 10-year note yield is here or possibly even lower, and we have a very inverted yield curve. And I think they'll look at this big balance sheet of theirs, this $8 to $9 trillion behemoth that was a $4 trillion behemoth before COVID, and say, you know what? If you guys want some of this stuff? We'll give it to you. And uh, we'll get a little bit more, uh, we'll get a little bit more mortgage securities floating into the market. Maybe some treasuries, but probably just uh, additional mortgages. And I think that could be a catalyst for, uh, one, a little bit of a spike up in yields. I don't think it'll last that long uh, because it'll be a tightening. It'll be uh, but that pretty that, oh, go ahead. I'm glad that you brought this up, and it gets into one of the biggest anxiety points for the market, which is that in a couple of weeks, we see the accelerated balance sheet unwind begin. But everyone's talking about this, or, or to your point, saying, you know, look, more of this selling could happen in the future, and yet yields, I mean, they don't look to me like they're coming unglued. We should be pricing this in now if it's going to be even a potential concern, right? And, and things look very calm and orderly and well-behaved. Well, at the end of the day, the long end of the yield curve, Kelly, as much as we want to talk about it being driven by supply, 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 and traders on desks love to talk about supply, the reality is it's really driven by inflation expectations. Yeah. And the Fed is tightening. When the Fed is selling assets, it's also tightening, and it is lowering inflation expectations. So ultimately, you've got this force of supply operating against this inflation expectation curtailment. And, and I think the inflation expectation curtailment will win. Um, that, that's kind of what the long end is telling you. Now, the initial response probably will be um, not so great for the long end if they did this. And it could obviously feed back into a negative uh, impact for equity short term. But I, I don't see those as long-lived events.